breastfeeding journey what should really matter to young african moms for your child to survive you have to make sure you breastfeed them mothers who don't breastfeed usually take a longer time for their uterus to go back to normal a lot of the conversations on the street is that breastfeeding itself makes you add weight wow. in the name of eating for two eh? i think a lot of people were looking at nutrition as a luxury Welcome to the Storybook Africa podcast, a sanctuary of inspiration and transformation for the vibrant youth of Africa. Through the power of stories, we weave together the threads of resilience, hope, and cultural heritage, empowering young Africans to embrace their unique journeys with courage and confidence. From the sweeping savannas to the bright cities to the remote villages, each episode invites you to explore the diverse contexts that shape the extraordinary experiences and visions of Africa's youth. So, sit back, relax, and let us transport you through the heart of Africa, where lions roar, drums beat, and beautiful life happens, birthing tales of wisdom that foster healing, growth, and development. So for those who are new to this conversation and, and particularly Jackie herself as well, my name is Whitney Mwangi. I'm the founder of the Storybook Africa and we've been running stories and programs that focus on empowering the youth in Africa through storytelling and entrepreneurship and we also do a lot of creative events to just provide a platform where young people can heal, grow and develop. And today we are having a wonderful guest today to talk to us about breastfeeding journey. What should really matter to young African moms? I've had the privilege of handling a couple of projects on nutrition, but not particularly on breastfeeding. So I'm very excited to hear from our guest today, who's joining us from, I believe, Uganda, but she'll tell us more about that. So Jackie, over to you. Thank you so much, Whitney. I'm so, so happy to be here. My name is Jackie Immaculate Chirabo. I'm a Ugandan nutritionist born and raised in Uganda. I'm a founder of Net Nutrition Specialist, a health and wellness center here in Uganda, where we advise on nutrition, healthy eating, healthy habits. We also offer breastfeeding support to mothers. I'm so excited to talk about breastfeeding. I'm also a mother of one, a young mother too. So this is a topic I really love to talk about. Thank you so much for having me. That's really beautiful and you're doing uh, quite good work because I actually found you on Twitter and I said to my team, we have to get uh, these people on board so we can have a conversation with them. Um, so it's a true honor to have you and I hope that when I visit Uganda, I'll have a chance to meet you in person. We'll be waiting for you. <laughs> okay, so tell us a bit more about nutritionists. What are some of the areas that you particularly handle? And as far as the conversation of breastfeeding is concerned, how do you integrate the care for the mothers and the children as well in your nutritional work? Um, so in line with breastfeeding support for mothers, so firstly what we do is provide information or through consultations, especially for modern mothers. So we provide a comfortable space where mothers can come and gather that information. So remember, for a modern mother, you don't have time to attend those antenatal classes. Sometimes you're very busy with work, you're trying to juggle very many things here and there. But at Net Nutrition Specialist, we provide a space where you can come in at your own time and get all the information you need about breastfeeding. Then uh, we also teach people how to breastfeed because uh, most people think breastfeeding is just as easy. You just get a child and put them on the breast and that's it. But actually, most people are not aware of how that it's a process, how it's supposed to be done. There are very many things to put into consideration. So we train mothers on how to breastfeed at our wellness center and that is one of the things that uh, makes us baby friendly we want our center to be very baby friendly for the mothers and also for the children and of course we also share about uh, breastfeeding on different platforms media 
we also advocate for breastfeeding personal I'm a breastfeeding advocate and also a lactation counselor so we do a lot of work in line with breastfeeding because it's the foundation for the children for the infants and it plays a very very big role that's interesting so I'm not a mom myself but I I'm definitely looking forward to this journey and i hear you talking about how breastfeeding is not just you know placing the breast on the you know onto the baby's mouth and also talking about lactation counseling so all these are interesting concepts and i wonder especially um looking at modern moms who you're saying they don't have as much time to come to antenatal care and those visits but you provide a platform where they can feel safe and considered uh, in terms of timing and space. What do you feel are the three benefits of breastfeeding, for example? Firstly, breastfeeding is beneficial to both the mother and the baby. But I'll start with the baby because right. it's the child that benefits even more. Firstly, it increases their chances of survival. Research shows that it can prevent at least 13% of all deaths in children under five, especially in the developing world. So for your child to survive, you have to make sure you breastfeed them. Then, of course, it provides all the food food, the nutrients and water that the child needs for the first six months of life. So it's a complete meal. You don't need any addition. You don't need anything else. It is really sufficient enough for the baby. Bonus of breast milk is that it has antibodies and at the same time it is completely hygienic. That means you don't need to wash bottles. These usually cause infections, especially diarrhea, which kills most infants. And then, of course, it contains antibodies that protect the baby from those infections and illnesses. So breastfed infants don't fall sick often compared to babies that are fed on other breast milk substitutes. At the same time, it's very key for brain development because it contains fatty acids that are absent in the infant formula, at the same time also absent in cow's milk, which are the two commonest breast milk substitutes. When an infant is growing, one of the parts that grows really very fast is the brain. And breast milk gives those essential fatty acids that are very key for brain development. And that is why studies link uh, breastfeeding to intelligence. As the child's or infant's brain is growing very fast, these essential fatty acids that are found in breast milk enhance the growth of those brain cells. And so the child is able to be more intelligent or perform better on intelligence tests if they were exclusively breastfed for six months and also continually breastfed up to two years for the mother it helps with recovery one of the hormones that is produced during breastfeeding called oxytocin mm -hmm. which helps the milk to come from the breast to the baby that hormone oxytocin is very key also for repairing our uterine wall to make sure that your uterus goes back to normal remember it's stretched during pregnancy this is very key for mothers so mothers who don't breastfeed usually take a longer time for their uterus to go back to normal at the same time it also has a lower chances of cancer later on in life there are lower rates of premenopausal breast and ovarian cancers for mothers that have breastfed their children so looking at all those importances we all benefit the baby benefits at the same time the mother also benefits then the last one is bonding there's a bond between the mother and the baby and that bond comes as during the breastfeeding time and this is very key for infants because they need a safe environment so breastfeeding provides that time for them to know their mother to recognize or to learn more about their mother that's why i think for babies they can be able to recognize that this is my mom but when they look at another person they can deficient their mothers from any other person because of that bond mm -hmm. yes <laughs> this is so beautiful you know as you're seeking for me to try and fully understand and contextualize i'm imagining you know the context of a baby and a mom and my mom always makes fun of me because she says i breastfed until i was two years old i did not want to let go she used all the tricks in the book she says she used soap she used chili but I, I was still the child who would even start crying for the breath, <laughs> public, you know? So it's wonderful. And I think uh, we can tie a lot of psychological effects, impact on the child 
as you've rightfully said in terms of intelligence the connection uh, the safety of the child overall health and well-being in the long term and surviving that critical period of under five uh, to survive and see their future. So now we understand the positive side of breastfeeding. So what are some of the challenges that you see in your day-to-day life as far as breastfeeding is concerned? Thank you for that. There are so many challenges that mothers face, but the first one is lack of knowledge. Like I said, breastfeeding is not just lacing the breast on the child's mouth and then you expect them to circle it's a process and most mothers don't have that knowledge there is poor positioning positioning in terms of uh, the mother has to be well positioned her back has to be straight if your back is not straight uh, you're going to stop breastfeeding because you have back pain and then of course the way you also position the child the way you hold the child matters the child has to be held straight and their neck should be facing the breast and not turning away from the breast. So most mothers are not aware of those positionings, especially for the baby, and it affects the suckling. If a baby is poorly positioned, they cannot suckle for long. So one of the biggest challenges mothers have is, my child does not like the breast, but it is because they have been positioned, they are so uncomfortable that they cannot suckle on the breast for so long. Some even stop breastfeeding because they say it causes a lot of back pain, my shoulders and because they sit in a in very uncomfortable ways they cannot continue breastfeeding for long now if you have a baby who really enjoys her breast and then you're sitting in a very uncomfortable position you're going to find breastfeeding very tedious you're not going mm-hmm. to enjoy it but if mothers can be taught how to sit upright and comfortably or how to use maybe nursing pillows to position the child and themselves. Sometimes you may need pillows at at the back to make sure your back is straight so that you can breastfeed properly. Those are some of the challenges. Then the other one is poor attachment. So like I said, it's not just a matter of putting the child on the breast. Our breast has a a dark part, that part which is darker than the other part of the breast called the areola. And then we have the nipple. When we are talking about poor attachment, most mothers attach the baby on the nipple. Now when you attach the baby on the nipple, that areola part is where the breast milk is forward. That's where the milk ducts are. I don't know if you've seen a cow, eh? when they're milking a cow, they cannot just milk it only on the nipple, they have to pull from the ducts where the milk is stored so that it can come. So most mothers are not aware that when they place the child and the child is on the nipple, they cannot get enough breast milk. They need to place the child in that their mouth is around that areola, that dark part on the breast. And then they pull the milk from the milk ducts, then it comes through the nipple. So poor attachment or poor latching, that's how they call it. eh? The latch on is very poor for some mothers. When you attach the baby to the nipple, the nipple will swell and it will be very painful. So some mothers usually get sore nipples and because the sore nipples are painful they say the child is biting you the child is uncomfortable so they stop the breastfeeding wow so i've heard some of these stories but i understood that it's because the child is biting you and all these things but now i hear it's also a concept of knowledge it seems like knowledge is power when you know what to do and how to position yourself, then you don't necessarily have to experience the other painful side. Yes, yeah, sure. Then maybe other challenges, stress. Most mothers are always stressed after giving birth due to maybe family problems. Some even get postpartum depression. Mm. So because breastfeeding is a hormonal process and stress is also a hormonal process, the hormone responsible for stress is called cortisol. So high levels of cortisol usually affect the production of oxytocin. And that oxytocin is responsible for milk production as well. Prolactin, there's a hormone called prolactin and then oxytocin. Mm. So stress affects those two hormones and it deters milk production. I bet that there's some kinds of food that one can eat to just make sure that um, even perhaps if you're under stress, I know stress psychologically you can eat all you want, but then if you're not able to process, it still causes other um, issues. And do you perhaps want to touch on some of the dietary practices for a breastfeeding mom to ensure that both her and her baby are healthy? Yes, of course, those are very key because if the mother is malnourished, 
then she's not going to have enough breast milk for the child. Absolutely. Yes. So even that affect breast milk production. There are certain foods that affect breast milk and there are certain practices that are very good as well for breast milk production. So firstly, when someone is breastfeeding, they ought to have more meals in addition to the usual meals. Let's say you have the main meals, we have breakfast, we have lunch, we have dinner. So a mother is supposed to have at least additional snacks, two snacks mm-hmm. in between to provide that extra energy. However, our young mothers want to get back in shape immediately after giving birth. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> They're running away from eating adequately to provide yeah. for breast milk. They want, I want my tummy back immediately. So wow. the first thing is do not rush for a weight loss. Breastfeeding itself burns calories. Right. Yes. But provide uh, a list of healthy carbohydrates that are not overly processed and that are foods that are not high in sugar. Yes. You know, this is very interesting because, as I mentioned, I'm not a mom, but a lot of the conversations on the street is that breastfeeding itself makes you add weight, which <laughs> now, from what you're explaining, does not make any sense. Uh, those are some of the misconceptions about Absolutely. breastfeeding. Yes. Yeah. So the only way it can make one add weight is uh-huh. if you eat excessively more than you need. Right. Yes. <laughs> okay. Even as we want, we want five five meals per day. Right. We would want foods that are from healthy sources. Eh? Right. Yes. Healthy alternatives. I can say. So in the past, our mothers, what they used to do was have given birth, then they have a full jug of porridge. This is in Uganda. Eh? In mm-hmm. Uganda, we really have a lot of food. So right. when a mother's just given birth, they call them a nakawere. So mm-hmm. those nakaweres, they would have like katogo. Katogo is like food, matoke, and either beans or peas or groundnuts or even beef. Eh? Mm-hmm. So in the morning, they would have like a big plate of katogo. Mm-hmm. And then add like a jug of porridge. And then like at 10, they're having the similar meal. And then lunch, mm-hmm. they're given like 10 carbohydrates. So someone all bulges up and becomes really obese as in wow. the name of eating for too. Eh? That's why people link it to breastfeeding. But actually our diets were so bad. Right. But uh, the other key factor is hydration. Mm-hmm. The mother has to drink a lot because remember this breast milk, it's milk, it's liquid. Eh? Right. Yes. So we need optimum hydration. I personally usually recommend warm water throughout the day. Mm-hmm. At least eight cups of warm water because it, it facilitates the let down process. It facilitates the milk to flow. Eh? Right. That warm water. Yes. And then, of course, including lots of fruits and vegetables because of their nutrient quality. We need a lot of nutrient-dense foods. So the problem our mothers did is they were giving a lot of carbohydrates, only one food group. Eh? Yeah. Yes, and this would make the mother pack weight. Mm-hmm. Yes, so we need a varied diet. We need lean protein, lean beef, lean chicken, lean fish. And we need even this protein in higher quantity because it facilitates the mother's healing. Let's say I've had a C-section, I need to heal. Mm-hmm. Even with normal birth, sometimes you have what we call an episiotomy where mm-hmm. they cut a certain part down there <laughs> to facilitate yeah. the child eh? right yes so for healing purposes we need quality protein we also need our carbohydrates just that they don't have to be excessive right you know it's very interesting because i think a lot of people were looking at nutrition as a luxury but as we go on uh it looks like this is information and advice and a kind of a care and consideration that we need for our day-to-day lives because even as you mentioned the list of how balanced the diet should be i'm thinking about my diet right in front of me i have a very big cup that i was just taking tea and some kind of thing one side is coconut the other side is chocolate so for sure (laughs) from your example what you have eh? now such foods during breastfeeding they affect the breast milk supply eh? Mm -hmm. yes high sugary foods they really affect and i love to explain this because also the Mm -hmm. regulation of sugar requires a hormone eh? so when we are eating for hormones we have to make sure we eat for all of them because when one is out of hand it will affect the other Mm -hmm. so high sugary foods 
people for insulin eh? right. and still when there's a lot of insulin produced it will affect the production of milk and then of course maybe uh, other sugary beverages the carbonated beverages eh? caffeine eh? this pass from the breast milk to the child mm-hmm. now imagine the effect that caffeine gives you on a baby wow <laughs> yeah that is insane don't you just love stories Stories shape how we understand the world, our place in it, and our ability to change it. We are all products of our backgrounds, perceptions, and experiences which form how we interpret the world. So we all have unique stories to share. You too can inspire the world with your story. The Storybook Africa accepts stories under three categories all year round: young and on fire, note to younger self, and dear diary. You can also join us to transform the lives of youth in Africa by 1 participating in youth empowerment projects we run through which we partner with businesses owned by young Africans to host events, run campaigns, or award grants for business expansion. 2 submitting or buying a digital product from our e-shop, which is a hub of amazing items that can support the community's healing, growth, and development journey. crafted by young africans excited to partner with us visit our website today for more information www.thestorybook.witneymwangi.com if i'm to start begin a journey to pregnancy for example it means that i would have to wean myself off high sugar levels and caffeine especially of course because even in uh-huh. pregnancy they don't recommend these even alcohol uh-huh. it's the same case it passes through it goes to the breast milk and goes to the child so the effect it gives you an adult the baby is also mm-hmm. likely to to have i see i see wow this is interesting and perhaps as something that i think we could work on is providing an outline or a guideline for moms who are maybe from you know communities where they don't have internet they don't have as much information to guide them on the kinds of of foods and diets that they can take on so that they can ensure that they have healthy babies that would be very good because communities people are really doing the worst eh? the right. knowledge is scanty in Uganda here when you give birth the person to look after you is either your mother or your grandmother mm-hmm. so such people always have really knowledge that is ancient eh? or yes. outdated yes. so now imagine in those communities that's the knowledge they pass on wow wow regarding okay. food i'll share a personal experience when i gave birth mm-hmm. my mother of course was advising the katogo the you know those foods eh? but because yes. i'm a nutritionist of course i had to listen but i could not practice yeah. what she was telling me eh? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. because I knew what to do and the other part where I've seen most mothers mess up is the moment the child is born eh? mm-hmm. so we have policy guidelines on breastfeeding in Uganda mm-hmm. and they recommend uh, early initiation that means mm-hmm. that the moment your child is born you should hold them on your chest to have mm-hmm. that call it kangaroo care or mother mm-hmm. to baby so that they feel your presence at the bonding and then you should initiate breastfeeding within the first hour of birth mm-hmm. now Now here there's a practice where they give a baby some glucose oh. with the assumption that the baby is tired. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That knowledge comes from our parents or our parents parents. Eh? Right. and it's very common in rural areas wow wow but okay. those things can even kill a child because they yes. are very new they've just been born they are sterile they don't have any infection or bacteria on them mm. and then you're giving them like glucose glucose yeah or some sometimes they give them herbs mm. yeah so wow it's very needed wow and now that we are talking about the role that the community plays you know both positive in terms of supporting the moms and the baby but also negative in terms of projecting their ancient uh, practices what are some uh, traditional beliefs that are surrounding breastfeeding in african cultures maybe we can just talk about top 3 that you see are very common around your day to day work yeah in uganda we have a belief that the first milk eh? the first mm-hmm. milk immediately when you've just given birth there's a first milk it is usually yellowish in color eh? mm-hmm. scientifically we call it colostrum there's a belief that that milk is dirty mm-hmm. yeah and so the mother is supposed to express it and throw it away they shouldn't give it to the baby that explains why they give them things like glucose they're waiting for the clear white milk i see wow yes 
I don't know mm-hmm. if it's, if it's the case with other cultures, but that milk actually is very very nutritious what gives it the yellow color is vitamin a mm-hmm. it also has uh, vitamins it has antioxidants it has antibodies and it's it's actually referred to as the liquid gold because it's mm-hmm. like the first vaccination for your infant mm-hmm. that means it's going to prevent them from falling sick yes but now okay. imagine culturally they tell you to throw it away because of the yellow color so they don't understand the nutritional bit of mm-hmm. that milk that it also helps with the child's digestion so god has a way he created things that they are yes. systematic yes i yes. agree and so, i can imagine if anything happens to you you start acting funny when you grow up a little and they give you that colostrum they will start saying it's because your parents fed you that milk they did not um you know spill it yes so that's one of the cultural beliefs we have here All right Mm-hmm. Then uh, some people also believe that breast milk is not sufficient for mm-hmm. up to six months. Like it cannot provide those nutrients up to six months. They think mm-hmm. that when the child is four months, they are hungry. Mm-hmm. They need something else. So wow. children always by four, they are all chubby. They have big teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Their reflexes are working. So they are pulling things eh? yeah. because they are growing. So sometimes right. when you're eating, maybe you're eating your junk food, a cake, they will want to pull it yeah <laughs> that's but, true because they're pulling cakes or ground nuts or whatever does not mean that they are capable of eating those foods so in our culture when a child starts pulling food they say they now want it whether they are six months or not they start giving right. them food at like four months wow the disadvantage is the moment you introduce those foods when the child is not ready they start falling sick Mm. infections upon infections infections upon infections yes then of course some mothers go to work our maternity leave is three months so if a mother goes to work after three months by force you'll likely introduce something else great yes but however breast milk is sufficient for a child from zero to six months and then Mm -hmm. from six months we can add something to eat which we call complementary foods to support it because then at six months it's not adequate Mm -hmm. yes that's very interesting so as we wind up i've learned quite a lot and i bet some of the women who have listened to us within the youth bracket and those who are older will certainly have follow-up questions but for the moment how can uh, breastfeeding moms be supported by their families employees and the communities around them better than what is happening now what do you think um of course uh, families family is the starting point for me i was blessed that uh, i gave birth when i had this knowledge right. so breastfeeding was really a walkover you know when you know you redeem a lot eh? so you right. know what to do you know how to latch you know how to hold the baby you know everything but families can support these mothers firstly you can assist with house chores eh? right. especially in the beginning uh, days someone has just given birth they are tired probably they are just learning this breastfeeding it's tedious it's a lot of a lot of changes they are getting used to the newborn then again they have to cook they have to clean they have you know all that that housework so you need support from your family you need someone to do this other work so that you focus on the baby fathers Mm -hmm. can assist by providing of course financial support like we said stress affects breast milk production now imagine a mother who has just given birth and they are worried of what they are going to eat where they are going to get money from i know ladies that go back to work after one month especially in the informal sector Mm -hmm. the reason their business has to run they have to cook I have a lady who prepares for us food. She gave birth and then after one month, I saw her back to prepare food for us. And I asked her, you're supposed to be home with your child. Mm. She told me, who who is going to give me the money? Wow. For those three months, who is going to give me that money? So husbands should be able to provide finances so that the mother can focus on healing. Firstly, she needs to heal. And then also the baby has to be breastfed. And then the emotional support. I've had counseling with some mothers. Mm -hmm. mothers are overwhelmed and they don't know how to explain to people that this is a new experience to me and um, I don't know how to respond to it. The work Mm -hmm. is too much. I don't understand whether I'm doing the right thing. Most mothers always have that question, but am I really doing the right thing? Am I doing enough? 
Yes. Yeah. So mothers are burning out. The work is too much. There is no support. There is no one understanding. Kind of in our setting, it feels like your mother. Eh, now you've grown. Hmm. Hmm. So you have to handle all the emotions that come with the child. You've not slept the whole night. Probably you're feeding because breast milk production is more at night, and hmm. baby is just. No night time is their waking time. They can't be fit at day. Yeah. <laughs> so you cannot try to sleep. That's when they are alive and kicking. I know. They can't be fit at day and night. So they will sleep throughout the day. Then they, they are awake the entire night. Wow. So mothers need that emotional support. They need someone who can understand what they are going through. That especially young mothers. This is a new journey. You can handle it. You will learn. It gets better with time. Mm. I, for one, also even with your knowledge and all that, the emotional support is very key. You need just someone to tell you, you know what? You will be able to handle this. Things will get yeah. better. Hang in there. But without that support, mm. you can't even breastfeed, even if you're willing. Wow. So mm. families can offer that. Then for employees, firstly, they need to provide that maternity leave, and mm-hmm. it should be paid. Paid maternity leave is very key. In Uganda, they give us three months, but okay. some employers will give you one or two months. Right. Can imagine. Now, I how see. do you expect a mother to leave her baby home mm. with probably a caretaker? Now, that's a very yeah. delicate stage. How is she going to handle? How is she going to work? So, at yeah. least the three months should be straight and they should be paid. Then, of course. Uh, we are currently working on a project called Workforce Nutrition where we, we want to make sure that workplaces here in Uganda have what we call breastfeeding rooms. Uh-huh. Yes. So employers should be able to set up such facilities where right. I can come with my child and I, I leave them in that nursing room and probably there's a caretaker and I work for my two hours, go check on my child for 30 minutes, come back, continue with work so that I'm, a mother is much more rested. Mm-hmm. Very many mothers quit their jobs mm-hmm. once they give birth. And, you know, as women, we are very intelligent. We are really very much suited for the work environment. But because there are no policies or structures that favor, especially women of reproductive age, Mm. most mothers keep dropping off. You find those ranks. That's why you realize those higher ranks, men are the ones taking over. Mm. Even if I have big dreams of becoming a CEO in a a corporate entity, the moment I give birth to three children, I can only be maybe first line manager. And that is if I've worked really hard. But I see. (laughs) You know, so so the workplaces should be really very favorable for us to be able to achieve our dreams and also look after our children. Yeah, for communities, uh, first of all, our leaders, our community leaders should pass participate in sensitization because people look up to them church leaders uh, right. political leaders people are looking up to them if as women leaders we walk up and say let's make sure in our communities we sensitize we take away the myths i believe we'll do a very good job and then uh, of course we have to provide an environment that is suitable for children in uganda we rent houses here or apartments but some mm-hmm. people will say if you have a child you mm-hmm. cannot rent my house oh really wow. <laughs> yeah someone said i don't allow people with children yeah wow i've <laughs> only seen that for <laughs> like holiday resort in mombasa in the coast i just saw it recently it's written adults only which was mm. very surprising to me because mm. i mean africa in general is very family oriented so we are starting to see some of these modern changes imagine if I, i've entered that apartment with my husband and then we give birth are they going to chase us away yeah, now you start moving out <laughs> that's for sure now they're looking at kids as pets i know it's like you know? a problem yet wow. environment should be favorable especially for children that are in like like special cases uh let's right. say maybe the child is hiv positive 
Mm. Um, let's say maybe the child is disabled or there are those special needs children and society sometimes stigmatizes the mothers you can't breastfeed your child in public because they have mm. a problem or when, when you have HIV sometimes if communities are not really favorable to provide love and attention to all kinds of children it's very dangerous I remember when I gave birth to my son he was a bit dark Okay. so everyone kept giving those negative comments this book Boy, oh. how come it looks like this and yet for mm-hmm. you it looks like that mm-hmm. and so I had to keep explaining no the father is dark so probably he took <laughs> the father's color <laughs> oh, no. and you try to recover from everything else oh my god people are Every so person. funny yeah. so I kept saying is it a problem to have a child who's dark I mean we are African <laughs> yeah wow people <laughs> so I thought I was the only one until I said in a group of mothers and they were all like disturbed by the comments people give when they visit their children this yeah. child doesn't look like you this child uh, is so <laughs> the mother g- can get stressed <laughs> yeah they start scandals there and there's nothing yeah so the mother is already yeah. saying no the child looks like the father the child looks like the grandfather so a child is a child they can look like anyone they're a band of joy they should just yeah. be celebrated <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I feel you and I congratulate you for how far you've come. How old is your child now? My child is making 4 years on 30th oh, September. Wow. Oh, yeah. wow. Look at that. Congrats and I wish you all the best on your journey as a mom. You know, you said you're a young mom and also an an activist in this area of nutrition and breastfeeding and overall uh, maternal and child health uh, care which I absolutely celebrate because that's the beginning of the next generation, um, the leaders who are coming up. And so we, we have to work hard to protect them. That's for sure. You see, they're talking about Gen Z's. Some of the problems, it's because of lack of breastfeeding. <laughs> so they say Gen Z's are rowdy, Gen Z's are <laughs> So now we are seeing all kinds of rebellion. That's I know. Sure. For real. And if we tie that a lot of psychological issues to how they bond, um, kids bonded to their moms, we'll definitely find strong scientific evidence to back that up. I know. I know. Yeah. Okay. That's all from me. Thank you so much again for making time to join us tonight. Uh, please let us know where we can find you on social media pages for those who'd like to follow you. You can follow me, Jackie Imi, on Twitter, or you can follow Net Nutritionists on Twitter. That's a company on Instagram. It is Net Nutrition Specialists. So you search that, you'll be able to find us. Our contacts are also there. And uh, myself, I'm on Instagram as Jackie Imi. Yes, right. your fave dietitian. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jackie. And you take care of yourself. I hope to host you again very soon. Thank you so much. Um, I'm always available. I love nutrition. I love talking about these health things because many a times we assume people know right. but people need the knowledge thank you for having me Whitney and nice meeting you it's a pleasure as well take care okay bye so that's our story what's yours be sure to connect with us on social media at the storybook africa on facebook linkedin and youtube or at the storybook underscore af on instagram and x Subscribe to the Storybook Africa podcast today on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Until we meet again, keep writing your own story and may it be a testament to your limitless potential. Hakuna Matata for now. And remember, your story matters. <laughs>